It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It's the DJ Roundtable Show with uh, all the DJs that uh, come on here, plus a couple, uh, plus one new face, uh, Darren Lee here from Premier Entertainment. Uh, he covers a similar area I do, uh, western area of Chicagoland, and he covers a lot of the same stuff. He's also a really close friend as well. And it's a pleasure having him on the show. So everyone give a big round of applause for coming and joining the show. I appreciate it. And uh, we thank you for being here. I'm also uh, hoping that a few other people will pop in here and able to talk tonight. So first thing first, I did send some questions out that came in from that came in from people uh, that were asking questions. And uh, one of the questions I ran into uh, last night, or actually today, uh, going through stuff, is a question. Uh, this is from DJ Mikey Mike from Pennsylvania. Uh, do you have to, or do you guys have to have background checks, child abuse checks, or FBI fingerprints? And this is regarding to school or prom uh, functions. So I know here in Illinois... Uh, some school districts do require it. Um, and uh, uh, oh, DJ Rachel will be here in a little bit as well. I know some school districts here in Illinois do require a background check. Um, I know I have a full background check. I know Darren has a full background check, uh, yes. both because the previous jobs we've had before. Um, and I know how we we both are. And I was wondering, uh, in California and in Wisconsin, do they require a background check um, for you if you're doing school functions? Not a background check. Um, the only time I've ever had to do that was if the wedding or event is on like a military base. So we've got a couple of Air Force bases, one in San Pedro, one in San Diego, and then another in and something or other um and you do have to like not fingerprint but just like your social and all that stuff just to make sure you're not you know a wanted criminal obviously on a military base and that no red flags pop up for terrorism or anything like that but as far as the school dances i mean i've got perfect one right here i just have to have abuse and sexual molestation coverage on my insurance uh I, yeah i have that on my coverage it's, yeah. it's a few so, bucks extra and yeah it's cheap but it's so, just that's just la school districts but it's funny because like they don't like they make me fill out all this paperwork but like they're the easiest district to work with outside of that like they don't care if you you know post any uh gig logs with their students like they, they really don't care but it's just they have to have the paperwork on file just to say they're doing their job but like the asb advisor for the school is like super chill and laid back and you know he's he's like yeah man just you know whatever content you want to use like promote it it's like i don't care whatever so okay. other than that no okay and darren i know uh first and first i want to thank you You're, he is a veteran uh air, it was in u.s air force he is a military veteran mm -hmm. and uh did uh some work there in the u.s air force and i want to thank you for your time uh guarding us as a you know defender of the constitution and of the united states and the military and thank you for your service mm -hmm. When you deal with schools, because I know you deal with schools much more than I do, and you have a couple of schools you deal with pr quite frequently, uh, do they require a background check or for you to show proof that you have a background check or fingerprinting? They haven't run into it yet. So, I mean, I don't know if it's something that may come down the pipe, which would be okay with me. Um, but I had not seen it yet, at least out in my area. And we're like far west of Chicago, like about an hour west of Chicago. So... But it could be something to come down the pipe. Okay. And also, it, you know, it's one of the things that they also know your background, too, and know that you were in the service and stuff like that a long time, you know, a while ago. Uh, they right. may say, hey, you're, you're a veteran. You're probably going to be able to pass a, a background check, not worry about it, you know, for most mm -hmm. part. Uh, DJ Brentley in Wisconsin. Again, uh, Brentley is a transplant from Chicago up to Wisconsin. So he, he went about beyond the Cheddar Curtain. <laughs> he escaped Illinois and went up to Wisconsin. And uh, I know you yeah. do do – oh, God, it's a bad thing to say. You do <laughs> some school dances here and there. Uh, you mostly do bars and weddings. But when you do a school dance, do they require a background check of any kind up there in Wisconsin? I have never run across it. And that this is when – you know, running ever after entertainment when it's sending our DJs out to school proms, 
nothing's ever come across our desks or our email that would require us for any of that. I mean, if it came to a background check, I'm not going to pass. And it's something from uh, 23 years ago now. But I've never run into a but where I think except liability insurance to a venue, and that's it. Not And now that I think about it, because Ever After is based in Minnesota and Wisconsin, our Minnesota DJs have never been asked for that either. And the Minnesota operation does a lot more proms than we do. Okay. Hmm. Okay. But I think definitely with the lacrosse crew, more of us are like, yeah, we don't want to do any proms. We're not. And with that, four of four of our DJs outside of myself all work in clubs and pubs around here. So we don't translate well to the under 18 crowd. It just doesn't work right. Okay. Again, you're you're more focused on the bar and wedding area and corporate events than versus the uh um, school dances and stuff like that. Sure, sure. You know, this, this I, I wish uh, Jeff uh, Johnson would have been here tonight. Uh, um, I, I, you know, I know he's got a lot of stuff going on. He's uh, he does a lot of school dances, and would be fine. Would be fun to find out what he does in North Carolina. Uh, again, it, it varies from state to state and area to area. And I think it's from school district to school district because I've done a couple uh, school dances here and there. I I don't market myself for that, but I've done them. And usually, you know, I've asked, you need a background check and your fingerprints like, no, but, you know, you're not a criminal. Aren't you? I'm like, no, not at all. <laughs> Me, no. <laughs> uh, and there's no way. Um, but the thing is that I don't think it's a bad thing. And I think where Mike is at in Pennsylvania, uh, they have state requirements are different than New Jersey or from Ohio or from other states. So every state varies. And I think that that should be a very interesting um, topic that, you know, DJs can ask that question and see where they fall, if they fall at all in any area that uh, do they need a uh, background check? And that's a, uh, that's a very interesting question. Oh, here comes Rachel. DJ Rachel is going to come in. So we're going to ask her that question. There, there she is. Give her a second or two to connect. There, they've got her audio. And there she is. All right, Rachel, how are you, ma'am? How are you doing out there in beautiful Connecticut? Hey. Um, it's kind of not so beautiful right now. We're getting, like, smoke from Canada or something like that. Oh, yeah. We, right we, we've we had that here in Chicago, so. <laughs> yeah, it's like insufferable outside i can't even imagine what those poor people are going through out there because it's like pretty terrible here and we're thousands of miles away so or like a thousand miles away or whatever yeah it, it's it gets some pretty sunsets though you can get some pretty sunsets out that's one nice thing um yeah but you get the allergies i just asked to pose a question that one of the questions that uh was asked by dj mikey mike out pennsylvania he asks, uh, do you guys have to have background checks, child abuse checks, and an FBI fingerprints for school dances? Uh, in Connecticut, are you required, if you do a school dance, are you required to get a background check or a any kind of check whatsoever? Or they, you know, just basically make sure you have proper insurance and that's it? Um, I mean, there's not a state mandate. It's per school and it's definitely a thing, but it's definitely not like an everything thing. Um, but if that's kind of your niche, right. And kind of the, the line of work you want, you want to do a lot of proms and stuff around youth. I mean, it's good to just have that prepared and just offer it because why not? Well, what's, what's the harm, harm in that, but it's, uh, not like a legal requirement, but I've definitely heard of that happening. Um, okay. I even remember reading something in a popular DJ forum about a DJ that had to get special insurance for like um, sexual like assault and sexual like harassment or it was something like insane. Um, yeah, we, have, we, have get, like, we have to get yeah. abuse and sexual molestation coverage for LA school districts. I have it yeah, on my insurance too. It's insane. Um, so it's a thing, but it's it's not required. It would be up to the school. So yeah, both Matt, Matt and I have it on our insurance. It's I have because I, I've done a few 
school events in the school district. That's one thing the school district required. It's an extra step. It's a, it only only costs a few bucks. It's uh, again, uh, it, it's it, unfortunate this day and age in 2023. It, it, some areas may require it and re- may ask for it. And it's one of the things that I just paid a few extra bucks for it and say, Hey, if I get asked for it, I have it, you know, I can show proof of it. You know, if I'm going to pay all this money for insurance, you know, 40 extra dollars for in the scheme of everything you pay for insurance, you're like, okay, fine, great. You know, that way, you know, you're 100% covered. Uh, again, thank you for coming in too. I know you're, uh, you had a wedding this past weekend and uh, you were a little under the weather for a little bit. Glad to see you're back uh, pretty much to like yeah. 90, 90%, 95%, hopefully around there. Um, that wedding on Saturday kicked my ass a little bit because um, I wasn't, <laughs> I still wasn't back 110%. And uh, like it was fine and, you know, we, we crushed it and all that, but. It, it took me a little longer to to recover. Um, now I, I'm like 99%. I just need a couple more, like just early good nights of sleep. And I think I'll be, be back in the groove. Well, you look awesome. And hopefully I've got it out of the way. You know, like now that wedding season's kicking off, I hope like this was my one and done. And then I could just be a rock star until, you know, November. Well, so. you'll, you'll be, a, you'll be a rock star. You always are. And again, uh, yeah. you look, you look wonderful. You got your smile. You sound really good. So Glad to hear okay, you're back good. to the uh, world of living with the rest of us, you know, and it always sucks being sick because I know sure we all have DJed not feeling 100% for whatever reason it is, totally. and it just, uh, it stinks. It stinks to say the least. So the next question I have, again, I, I sent multiple questions out today uh, because we got hit with a lot of questions on the last couple um, uh, shows and uh, it's like the past two days I got all these uh, questions asked. I'm like, oh wow, a lot of people are watching the show. Which, by the way, if you haven't done so already, make sure you follow us on Twitch and make sure you click click the like button here. If you got any comments, critiques, quit criticisms, questions, anything as such, put it down below. And make sure you follow everyone here on social media. Their links will be down below in the bio. You'll be able to click onto them and go to their social media and, and make sure you follow them. You know, Rachel has a very big presence on YouTube as well as DJ Solsis. Uh, DJ Brentley does too. Uh, yeah, we all have uh, social media one way or another and have lots of great videos and pictures out there that we love sharing. And make sure you, you follow them, show them the love and care for being on the show. And again, like for it's always great having great DJs here on the show. Uh, the qu- next question is, this comes from uh, Adrian. Uh, he said, uh, good question for the week. Uh, what are some of the biggest pitfalls that you've run into and what have you, what do you do about it? What's the biggest pitfalls you run into and what do you do about it? What's the, how do you overcome that pitfall? So, uh, Darren, I'm going to start with you. What has been the biggest pitfalls you've run into over the years of DJing and how did you overcome them? I would say... Probably the power issue with venues or non-venues, um, farms. We do a lot of farms. We do a lot of tent weddings. Um, powers could be a little sketchy at times. And I've actually blown a speaker with one of the power, with one of the venues we did. Um, another one, they, they ran off a generator, which was out in the middle of a cornfield. And, uh, the generator wasn't wasn't it wasn't powerful enough. Didn't have enough wattage, um, so we had to cut back. You know, we cut back on dance lighting or stuff that that you know kind of went minimalist with it. I mean, we made it work. Um, you know, always have backup equipment, so we we switched out some things, and but we made it work. But um, sometimes these new venues going in, they're just not. You know, we've opened some new venues and. It's just the power issues, you know, the wiring. They have everything on one line. And uh, whether it's the caterers, um, even down to uh, the porta potties, you know, they're lighted. They're, everything's running on the same circuit and it just overpowers it. Um, you know, so it, that's my con- that's one of my concerns. And I guess over the years, it's the first thing that comes to mind is power. Okay. And then yeah. DJ Rachel, I know you're in Connecticut. You do a you're like us out here in the Western Burbs of Chicago. You do barn weddings, you do outdoor weddings, you do indoor weddings at nice, beautiful venues. You kind of run into the same things as us. What is your big pitfalls you run into and how do you overcome? How do you adapt? 
I mean, God, there's so many. Every event you're throwing curveballs. I think the definition of mobile DJ is like adaptability and flexibility. If you're not, you will you will never survive. You will never make it, um, you know, through this industry, at least with your sanity. Um, I mean, I guess my most recent one, you know, the, the wedding this past Saturday um, actually had a like a, a post about it. So I always do a venue walkthrough with my couples because I want to know what I'm walking into. And I also want to know what gear makes the most sense for the event. My couples have little to any say in terms of gear. I'm bringing what I think is a, a appropriate, you know, um, lighting everything. And um, they're, they're fine with that. So anyway, I did this venue walkthrough. And I had um, a specific plan in mind based on where I was told I could go and the amount of space that I thought I had. So when I, you know, the when you walk, excuse me, the venue walkthrough sometimes is a lot different uh, than the reality of the situation. Because once everything finally gets put in the room and people see how big the tables actually are and how the chairs have to be spaced, sometimes things just aren't the way you had originally planned. So uh, my area was filled with three different dinner tables. Like it wasn't even just making like a little adjustment. Like it was a main seating area that was utilized by the caterer. Um, and they were pretty much just like, Hey, you, you just, you need to figure out a spot to go. <laughs> and they kind of stuffed me underneath a, a staircase and uh, it worked out good. And thank God I own like a compact booth and, you know, evolve fifties and stuff. Um, but I actually had packed totems and movers because the, the client wanted, you know, a little bit more of a, you know, I'll just say like an upscale lighting look. And that was not happening. Right. Um, you know, they weren't disappointed, but I was just like, guys, in the space I have this, this just this isn't this isn't going to work out. Um, so just having like the wherewithal to like repicture things, pivot on the fly make it work in a possible situation and find a way to make it so everybody wins. Like, so the caterer had to move the tables, like, you know, two or three, two or three feet down. Um, I had to compromise the space that I had. I had to be at a kind of like a weird angle and we made it work. And I guess that's kind of like the biggest pitfall as a mobile DJ is people changing things and you just being able to adapt to it um, without complaining or making anybody's life uh, difficult and just that's it. So yeah, I don't know. That happens to me like every freaking weekend. So, <laughs> I think also the other part is having willing uh, willing partners that will work with you, and those willing partners that don't have a problem with you asking to change things. A lot of venues will say, "Oh, other DJs do that all the time." I, I run into that, and I'm sure you guys all run into that. And I want to hear some stories from uh, DJ Brentley and also from Matt. Uh, Sometimes you run into uh, venues that, you know, uh, oh, the DJ always goes in that corner there. And I perfect example is a wedding I did last year. Uh, it, they, it's a golf course uh, and a country club. They have a little cubby hole that's a cutout in the wall, basically. And it's not a cheap place. And that's where they sit the DJ at. And usually the DJ puts two speakers out in front of you and you're 15, 20 feet away from the dance floor and you have tables in front of you. So uh, because of, you know, Sennheiser, thank you, Sennheiser, uh, and like you kind of do with your uh, wireless system for uh, uh, for ceremonies and cocktail, how you daisy chain speakers wirelessly. I also use the in air monitors too for wireless speaker systems, and I put my J eights in the in the next to the uh, stage where the uh, sweetheart table's at. Put the lights there, so I had no physical connection between me and the speakers, and covered the whole entire dance floor. And the lighting was the lighting was fo focused on the dance floor. And the music was going down because it's kind of a, a rectangle kind of uh, room, and it's filling the whole entire room. So it's like stuff like that. You, like you said, you have to adjust and overcome. You can't just sit there and say, "Well, I'm going to do the same thing everyone else does." I did something different, and the the staff there was like amazed that a DJ did something they weren't expecting. So that's sometimes a, a great thing because they're like. We need to have you here more often. <laughs> so DJ Brantley, what about you? What, what what pitfalls have you run into and how you overcame them? I've definitely had a few, and this is, you know, a few of the venue says one thing, like my gig log from last October 8th at Rustic Occasions in Loyal. But I try to get around that well before I show up and I'm definitely really anal about calling a venue. 
making sure that they have everything I need at least a week before and to touch base with who I'm going to be working with the day of. Now, like, and again, that one I did last October, I called the venue. I did everything that I normally do and checked in with them, checked on power specs, everything. They're like, every, and they, they're like, you will have everything you need. Only to come show up and find out they were completely told me everything wrong. So more often than not, I will first make that call, talk to the venues I'm at. The day of, I will show up and make sure everything's correct as we talked about. Cool. And if we don't, if it's not, I will actually pull up my notes from the phone call and be like, this is what you told me. This is what I need. This is what my client is paying for. You told me I'm getting this. Make it happen. And with that same, you know, hand in hand with that, it's also why I'm really only at like three or four wedding venues here. Like, as I say, I've got my golden five and I try not to leave them very often. And with that, I know and the pitfalls is going to venues you don't know and having to work with staff that isn't doing their best to make sure your couple's, their couple or our couple, their day is the best they can make. And that's another reason why I've been more and more shying away from accepting gigs at venues that I know I'm going to be running the whole show. I'm going to have to run to and from the kitchen. I'm going to have to do X, Y, and Z in addition to just trying to DJ, do the MC stuff, and all of that. It got, and there's a lot of venues like that in this area. So knowing which ones that I just I can't do anymore, just because I'm not going to work myself into the ground for you know 12 to 16 hours that I'm there, and have to deal with everything under the sun that isn't going to be helping the wedding move forward. But the biggest pitfall, and I'm going to say is relationships. Honest, and maybe my schedule being different than everybody else's, because as soon as, you know, wedding season dies off, I'm hitting the club circuit three to five days a week. During wedding season, I'm still like, I had, what, four weddings last week, two club dates last week. And if I was still with my now ex-girlfriend, I would have been getting into arguments by Saturday or Sunday that I'm pushing too hard. I'm not making time for her. I'm only making time for my kid and for work. And the relate my relationship after three and a half years, it, there was no recourse in it that because of my dedication to the couples I'm working for and getting better at being a DJ, something else in my life had to suffer. And so I'm single. That was one of the biggest things I took away from our relationship that if I ever want to be with somebody again or get involved with them, I best make the time for them and set it aside if we're dating. Not just kind of haphazardly like make them time for them later on in the year, but actually make sure they know I blocked this off for them and make sure we actually follow through and do the things that you're supposed to do in a relationship. And I think that was the biggest yep. thing in three and a half years I really ignored. So yeah, that, that was my biggest bit. That that's 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 always a hard part is relationship with friends and family and so forth, and having stuff um, with stuff. And the uh, the big thing uh, we got we got joined by two other DJs here, DJ Fire Nathan, which has looked like yeah. he's having some dinner with us. But we have Rachel here. You're supposed to have pizza. You have Rachel in the room. You got pizza. There's only one thing you have. It's that's pizza. And when she comes here to uh, Nam. We gotta make sure we get her some good pizza to her. Not, not the tourist. And Darren, please take yeah. note: no deep dish pizza, no, no, no tourist pizza. I had that yesterday with uh, Mike. We, I took him. He was up here in Chicago, and uh, took him to uh, Moretti's, and he had uh, he had to try the deep dish pizza up here. He loved it. He enjoyed it. Uh, but we gotta get you some nice thing for us and good stuff. And um, Mike, <laughs> I've been in New York, buddy. I know you've been in New York. New York's different. We're Chicago. I've been in New York. I've had New York pizza here. So, uh, Matt, a question for you uh, as uh, we're going around it, around here, and I'm going to get to uh, both uh, Nathan and to Mike. Uh, the I'm going to re read, read the question. Um, what are some of the biggest pitfalls that you run into, and what do you do about it? How do you overcome those pitfalls? Uh, like load in difficult load in, um, and kind of the same as what other people said, where 
oh well the dj normally sets up here and and this plug is is where they plug into and it's because their normal dj is two speakers and a gig bar and you know no real equipment like no real production and so you know we come in with all our equipment and 95 percent of the time i get the comment we've never seen anything like this before and wow you're so much different than the other djs and it's like yeah and in the contract it states you know we need an easy path to load in we need uh this amount of power and nobody of course reads it and uh or checks with the venue so that to me always makes it difficult um it's not usually a space thing like i'm adaptable but uh you know i prefer to be in the center it says in our contract to put the dj near the dance floor and not in the corner and not tables surrounding the dance floor um but a lot of people don't listen to that which it is what it is but really the thing for me is is like uh like noise limits so we've started i didn't used to ask what many people are getting married at but now i do because i was just i refuse to work at a venue that has a noise ordinance it's just it's not fair to the couple um if it's like 95 100 okay you know if it, it's reasonable 90 92 okay that's different but if it's like 75 60 and they're actually going to enforce it come on you know and then and then the thing is like they don't tell the couple or they do and then they they follow it with oh well you know we've had djs plenty of times before and the noise hasn't really been an issue and then you know they send me their agreement and it's like 55 decibels and i'm like are you are you serious like that that's this level like <laughs> So yeah, I, the, I just have a venue that had um requirement no higher than 55 decibels outside, uh, which I showed the one girl I, I have because I have a meter on my phone. I have a meter yeah. on my phone, app on my phone for sound decibels, uh, sound meter, and I have an actual sound meter in my uh tool kit, um, my uh, cart. And we're just talking normal conversation like I'm having with you guys, and it was 61 62 decibels and she's like really i'm like that's normal conversation that's it's not us yelling it's not screaming it's having normal sure. conversation you know 55 decibels is really really low uh mike so question for you is the same question i've been asking everyone else here is um if you run into a problem you know if you run into a pitfall um how do you overcome it i guess it really depends i mean I have never run across like a noise ordinance at a venue yet. Uh, to, to what our other DJ were saying, as far as like uh, facility managers that are, you know, that are already against the wedding party for some reason, either they feel like they didn't pay enough for their, you know, their spot at their venue. I had that happen at the EIU ballroom, you know, where the facility manager was uh, just like, oh, I just hope this ends early so we can get out of here and this and that. I'm like, well, look, they booked me till X time, and that's the time I'm going to be here. You know, even if the people left early, I almost just wanted to stay just because she was being so crappy about it, you know. And there's a lot of venue around here where the people that are running them will make our lives more difficult than they have to be. But with me, like, I have, I don't know, there's a way about me when I deal with people I don't know if it's that my experience comes through or just, uh, you know, my attitude about it. But nine times out of ten, I just do what I want. And they, you know, they fall in line. I, I don't really worry about it. Like I said, they were paid, you know, in advance almost every time by the wedding party to have this venue. And they bring me in and I'm going to do what I need to do. I mean, there are venues that are, are more accommodating, but then there's other ones that really are fighting against you. You know, for whatever reason, which really hurts their venue. I mean, I just don't I would never recommend those people. And I, I do that all the time. If someone's telling me that, hey, we're going to book, you know, so and so venue. I'm like, don't don't book it. I, I, you know, there's 10 other venues that are way better. You'll have a way better experience. And the people will actually give a crap about, you know, your about your actual, you know, wedding and your wedding receptions. So, like I said, I, you know, nine times out of 10, I really just, uh, you know, attitude wise, professionalism wise, I, you know, I, I kind of roll in there and I tell them what I'm going to do. They can tell me, oh, this, that, or whatever. I had someone try to put me in a corner, like you were saying, Solstice. And I'm like, I cannot set my equipment up there. That is, there's just no way that I, that I can fit right there. And, and, you know, it's like, well, the wedding party usually takes the stage. Like, well, I'm going to take the stage and they'll, set up their wedding table off on, on the other side. That was fine with them. You know what I mean? So it's, it's really the pitfalls for me are, are dealing with 
venue and facility managers that don't know what the hell they're doing. Okay. That's, that's very important. And then, um, yeah. Nathan, if you can unmute yourself, have you answered a question next? And, Are you uh, talking to me? Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> I know. I know you're having some dinner there, and you're, <laughs> you're supposed to share with, the, start, share with everyone. See again, like we're at pizzeria. <laughs> we're at. I am at Denny's. I work so much other than doing. DJ I know. Work, you know, y'all. Yeah. Long term business. You got. You got to get food. Now, you can get food. So <laughs> I eat late at night. So the question to you is: is one of the questions on uh, people have asked over the past couple of days? Um, is uh, what are some of the biggest pitfalls that you run into and what do you do about them when you run into a, a pitfall at a venue? How do you, or a, a event, how do you overcome your pitfalls? Well, I think the very biggest one I had was at that, uh, one wedding I did, was it two years ago? Um, it, a lot of it seems to be the venue owners, just like Mike was saying, you know, they think that they know where DJs need to set up and how they need to set up. And, oh, we've had DJs in here before. And I'm like, yeah, but you've never had my setup in here before. I'm one of the biggest setups in the area or I'm, you know, I don't have someone coming in with a two top speakers and a gig bar, you know. Um, I just, I think that the, you know, the, the venues a lot is what I have problems with. Like the venue owners, not so much the venue themselves, but the venue owners, um, they have uh, a tendency to, like, especially when you're loading in. When I was loading in that one uh, in Green Up, it was called, it's changed names. I can't remember what it used to be called, but I had propped the door open so I could roll in my flight cases and stuff. And the owner came in and said, oh, no, you cannot do that. And I was like, I'm rolling stuff in. I don't really, it's kind of hard to hold the door open because it was a heavy door and push my stuff in at the same time. So yeah, it's, it's hard to move cart, the carts in and that. out. And then there was there was chairs in the way where I was supposed to be set up. She didn't have anything cleared. Um, where the outlets were, the extra chairs were just shoved up against the wall. So I had to move chairs and dig for outlets. It, it, it was a mess. So that's really the only thing. And I got frustrated. Like I was like, really? And then the bride and groom came in that night because we set up the night before, and they were like, "Are you serious?" And I'm like, "Yeah, this is how this place looked." So I started moving chairs and moving stuff so I could set up. And then the venue owner got mad at me for moving the chairs. I'm like, well, where was I supposed to set up? You had chairs all over the place. And I had, I ain't going to wait for you to get here, you know? But. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's that's the hard part, you know, dealing with ven venue owners or venue managers who are hard to deal with. So the, the quick question around uh, the yes or no question for – the group because I always like to ask a yes or no question, which kind of this, the first this question kind of leads into the yes or no question, and we're going to start with Rachel on this one. Um, is the yes or no question is if you are presented to set up on a stage or on the floor, do you prefer stage or floor? Rachel, you want to go first? I'm probably overthinking it, but can I ask like a question to the question? Go ahead. If it's like a like a one foot just little like bloop up, I'm okay. If it's like a theater stage where it's like, you know, I gotta take like an elevator to get up and it's like a pain in the ass to get up on it. Like you know in a school gym, how sometimes they have like stages in gyms. If it's something like that, I'd rather be on the floor. But if it's just like a little elevated platform, sweetheart table kind of area, yeah, I'll 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 choose that over being on the on the floor just to keep people from like, you know, bumping into me. So it depends. I know it's not yes or no. It depends on the stage. <laughs> I don't want to be up on one of those crazy theater high ones. That's a pain in the ass to set up on and, and all that. So, yeah, it, 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 it's one of the things. It's hard. Thing. It depends. It depends. Yeah, it yeah. Depends. So uh, it depends on the stage. Okay, so it depends on the height. If it's a short one, no problem. If it's a tall one, which you gotta have some stairs to go up, it uh, is a no go. Which I understand because. We all know carrying speakers and gear and stuff like that. And I know you have that beautiful booth that you have uh, that's real, real cool. That it, it, it looks beautiful, just like it basically as a T. 
and it has this beautiful look to it. And on a little stage, I could see that, but on a big stage, carrying everything up there, going up and down, even though it's got little casters on on the case, I'm sure, it is hard pulling up and down, and then you're hitting the stairs, and you don't want to damage the stairs. I totally understand that. So, uh, Darren, for you, um, do you prefer a stage or do you prefer a floor? And again, kind of the same thing as Rachel. If it's a short stage, it's okay. Or it's a tall stage, okay. What's what's yeah. your what's your limit? Definitely a short stage, like Rachel said, is is probably preferred. I've had too many <laughs> too many people by the end of the night are, are like falling into the booth. Um, doesn't happen every wedding, but it, it you know it it can happen. Um, so I do like I do like the the small riser, you know, whether it's a foot or so um but you know if you get to like like you know like a school stage you know like three feet tall i'm not a big fan of it um i'd rather be on the floor um and then i mean we have a couple weddings this year where, where the venue wants to put us in the second level so it's kind of like uh, the catbird like spot i'm not a fan of it i don't like it i don't want it i mean it's not necessarily just because of Luggage equipment up to the second floor, but you're kind of away from the dance floor, and then you know you're up and down constantly for. Re- then you got music requests. So, are you going to try to make have your guests come upstairs and make requests? I don't think Especially that's drinking alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm just not a fan of it. I like yeah. to be on the. You know, I like to be on the floor. I like to be there on the dance floor. So uh, I know one of the venues you did a while back, we talked about this because, again, you and I have been friends for many years, um, is the Glen Club in Glenview, Illinois, where they have that, like, uh, DJ booth up in the sky because, you know, it's, they sell to the bride and groom that your DJ's up there. Look how your DJ, look how cool it is. Um, out. Yeah, uh, yeah. And removed from the dance floor and... Yeah, request. So you have either yourself or again, you you were like me that you have your wife working with you and having her run up mm-hmm. and down the stairs, grabbing the request sheets every so often, or trying to do other things. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, fine, and great, but again, someone comes wants to come and request. They walk up those stairs, they fall down. Whose fault is it? That's the that's the thing I don't like stages for because someone tries to climb it. Even a little one foot stage or two foot stage, it's like they try to climb up there a lot of times to talk to you because they're, they're they're drinking. And it's like I don't want to see someone falling, getting hurt, and then who's liable? Who's 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 whose insurance is covering this one? So DJ Brentley, I know one of the places you use that you go to, uh, and you use their raised area because um, that's where they usually put you. And it's a very prominent area, very beautiful area. Um, and I think that you don't have to we if you go downstairs, you have to go downstairs to bring the equipment downstairs. But where you're at up there, you actually just wheel stuff right in. You're the same level as the outside, correct? No. No, uh, it's celebrations the room I'm at the most. It's two steps. So you're about what 12 wait, 12 or 16 inches off the ground. And so yeah, it's a little bit, it's it's not much of a pain. And honestly, when it comes to it. I prefer being up. I, as long as I'm on the same level as the rest of the party is. And for example, celebrations, I'm up 18 inches. There's a hall in a city, a couple of cities over in Cashton, where you're up on like one of those gymnasium stages. I still prefer that over being down on the ground level with everyone. And that's because of where I'm getting booked out of. I mean, 90% 90% of, or over half my weddings are booking me from what I do at a couple of the clubs I'm at. They want that there, and I know they're going to act like they do at the clubs I'm at. So more often than not, if I can get raised up, in fact, I'm really considering buying one of those like 18-inch stages, you know, four by eight just for me and my gear. I've really been thinking about it. And when it comes to requests, if, for example, if I'm up another floor, not happening. I'm closing the door. You're not coming up to bother me. And I hate, you know, sound pretentious like that. But the first club I ever worked in to get uh, when we, the club moved to its second location, you couldn't make requests anymore. I was three floors up looking down at the dance floor. There wasn't a cell phone where you could shine something at me. I couldn't hear you. So only thing I knew is if they were dancing, I was on the right path. If I played a bad song on the floor cleared. I knew I did something stupid, but more often than not, I definitely prefer being up and above everyone. 
Okay. And I say, there's a second reason I say that because it's happened more than once. In fact, you know, maybe two weeks ago where someone slipped and fell on the dance floor and no one would have caught it except for the couple people around them. And when it happened, I was at the perfect, you know, height advantage. Be like, hey guys, let them up, help them up and got in the microphone so they would help them up because not everybody saw it and everything was, you know, blaring, lights are flashing. I pulled down, they got them up and got them where they needed to be until I returned to the normal thing. But yeah. Okay. What about you, uh, Matt? What do you, uh, what do you prefer? You give prefer me that stage the, uh, all day, every day. You prefer what? I'm no, sorry. I say, give me that stage all day, every day. I don't care what size. I, I prefer to be above the, the crowd, and I like being on a stage just because it makes me feel like I'm at a festival. You know, you, you want to be like you want to be like Dead Mouse and uh, I have all the attention. David Guetta yeah. and all them yeah. on stage it going helps. like this to people like yeah, arm, wave your arms up, put your hands up one more time. It, you know, it helps prevent <laughs> it helps prevent any um requests too. And the other cool thing is when you're on a stage like that elevation, you can do so much more with like trussing and even just speaker stands. Like some of the coolest setups I've done have been a bunch of my par lights on just regular speaker stands and making cool little like S patterns with them and all sorts of other stuff. Cause there's just such a height elevation on a stage that you can do that with, that you can on the ground. So I like a stage. Um, yeah. I'm not a big fan if you have to like get your stuff up there, but if you think about it, if you can like wheel in right to the edge of the stage, then as long as you have somebody with you to like, just, just lift the stuff that needs to go on stage, just right up there. I mean, it's normally at like waist height. So picking a speaker up and putting it from the cart to waist height isn't too much trouble for me. Um, but yeah, so I, I like stages. I think they're, they're fun. And I also think like there's venues here where there's a couple of wedding venues that have stages and sometimes like they just don't even use them, like not even for a head table or a DJ. And it's just such a waste of space. Like it's such a cool, it's a cool feature to have a stage. And plus like, you know, if, if your setup is clean and, and, compact you can have other people get up on stage with you if it's like bride and groom and get some cool pictures shoot the co2 gun you know kind of whatever so i like the stage okay what about you mike what do you think you think you like a stage or no stage or what I, do you like i enjoy being on the stage i just don't enjoy a lot of times loading into it or on onto it you know because i'll i like i said i i mean i've been on a few stages here real recently and it's just it just makes my job harder as far as, and then when we're working with kids, like doing like the proms and I'm on like the high school stages, which are like you're saying, waist high, at least, you know, lifting my subs, lifting my booth, lifting my, you know, all my lighting, all my stuff that I put up on there, you know what I mean? And then loading out, it's, you know, it just makes my life a little harder, but uh, in the long run, I, I mean, I don't mind being on it. I was on a stage, the nightclubs, you know, when I did that, you know, every single weekend for like seven years. So I appreciate it, you know, especially people happen to like go out of their way to get up there to ask me to play something that I don't want to play. You know what I mean? But uh, at the same time, when I do some of the younger events with the younger kids, I kind of like them to have access to me so that they're not trying to climb those stages around my gear and stuff to come tell me the song they want, you know. So I do like being on the stage. Downfalls is load in and load outs. And then um, the positives of being on the ground is that people can, you know, the kids can access me and tell me what they want, so on and so forth. And I can tell them no, you know. <laughs> well, only because it's usually, you know, not playable for their school function. You know what I mean? Okay. And then finally, DJ Fire. Um, what about you? Do you prefer stage or no stage or short stage, um, long stage? I've done, I've done the prom, the special needs prom on the church stage. That was kind of cool because you're above people and you can kind of get a better scan over the crowd. Um, so I would, I would probably say it's would like to be up on a stage. I've actually thought about buying one of those collapsible stages like Rick Webb uses occasionally. Um, but I don't know how often I would use it if I'd have the room. A lot of venues around here you don't have a whole lot of room to set up on those stages, especially if you're setting up a big trussing rig or something. But um, I wish more venues had stages around here, I guess. Um, and DJ Rachel, I want to say, I really enjoy your uplighting pictures that you post. 
your uplighting you use looks really good. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's um, just a great, easy way to bring a lot of impact with, I'll say, minimum effort, especially with Ape Labs. They're, they're just what, awesome. Thank you. What ones from Ape Labs you're using? The one that kind of gives the three little little lights going in three different directions? Those are really cool. Yes, yeah, so I have a combination of Maxis, which is their uplight. It's a three diode, forty-five watt fixture. I have uh, ape cans with that Fresnel lens, which is giving you that you know V-shaped thing that you like, and those are great for architectural things like fireplaces and uh, you know ledges around the room. That's it's not really an uplight uh, per se, and a lot of people try to buy those as an uplight, right? Because they're like a quarter of the price of a maxi, but you're getting one 15 watt LED instead of three of them. You know, it just, it's right. not an uplight. It's an accent light. Um, I have some minis, uh, which are kind of a good supplement and you can use it for centerpieces and stuff. And then I do own actually a couple of ape sticks, but that was a, a buyer's remorse. Not that they're not dope, um, but I don't really have a lot of <laughs> like application for them. And frankly, to put the effort into find a place to put them, I'm all about streamlining and leaving the majority of the shit at home. Like that's my, my 2023, like I just want to streamline clean, great essentials. So I don't know. They, I should sell them. They're just kind of sitting in the garage doing a whole bunch of, <laughs> whole bunch of nothing, but you know, but yeah, no, um, my ape labs are, are awesome. Well, you, you do a really good job on your, your pictures you post on Facebook. I, I think you're putting a lot of hard work into it and it definitely shows. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Well, one, one of the things also, uh, Darren, he has some Ape Lab lights. Um, so maybe he would buy your uh, sticks from you because uh, he uh, uses Ape Lab. And Ape, Ape, that's <laughs> nice about Ape Lab, especially at the little ones you put next to each other. You can put you know five or six really close by and have that awesome effect you have like on, on a uh, back wall. Uh, BSR has done the same thing. Brandis Red's done stuff with uh, multiple little uh, of the Ape Labs and run like 10 or 15 across the wall with that uh, lens and just give a really unique look. And you do the same thing too. It, which, it, it, it makes you stand out versus the typical DJ walking in and putting up a, a, a dance light or two and saying that's it versus, hey, you know, we're going to use intelligent uplighting. We're going to use intelligent uh, lighting period and do things. And... Uh, the stick lights, I could tell you, because I use Asteras, uh, it was in addition to uplighting, those Asteras as stick lights, you project so much light onto a floor, and I'm sure the Ape Lab probably does the same thing. It really acts and acts and very nicely, uh, the uplight. So it's something that uh, I would say, probably say, hey, you know, if you got some stuff, probably stick it, because you, you, um, you have M50s, right, for your uh, main speakers, Evolve 50s? Yeah, I don't know if you can I, on the actual uh, column. I don't know if you can attach the light on one side or the other. I've seen a few DJs do that. You can, uh, with... and, and and I have, but again, if I'm trying to roll in and I got to remember to charge them and bring them, and just for the impact, I don't know. It just to me, I just it's the juice ain't worth the squeeze. But the Asterias are way brighter than an H stick, at least the. Okay. The two, the one point the two point and the XL is more of an Asteria look. The ones I have are nowhere near your Asteria tubes. So, yeah, both both. So and I, me, I have a a lot of venues come around. They're like, "Hey, this is great lighting. Like, what is it? Like, where can we buy it?" And then when I tell them, like, "Hey, you're looking at twenty thousand dollars in lights," they like gasp and just like turn around and they're like, "Never mind. We'll just let you bring it." They have no concept of what premium up lighting. Well, I, I know uh, uh, Ape Lab does installed cool. lighting too. They're, they have a video on their uh, their page for installed lighting around the room and they play a Tiesto song and it's just very impactful. But again, if you want to have the good stuff, you want to have Asteras, you want to have Ape Labs, you want to spend the money on good lights, good lights are not cheap. And that's what separates, I, I feel, professional DJs <laughs> from the people who put, again, two speakers on a stick, and they get you know a spin and puke light, and from from you know uh, from China that does like one thing and that's it, versus someone who makes it more elegant of a look. And I really feel that your look and Matt's look and uh, Mike's done some stuff, and I know Darren's done stuff, and Brentley does stuff, and I do stuff. We want that impact. We want that 
kind of when the bride and groom walk into the room and their friends and family walk in the room, they invite her to their wedding. It's like they get awestruck. They're like, oh, wow. They have that impact, that look, that feel. And having that in any room, I feel it's a very important thing. That separates the good DJs from the DJs who are just, just there you know, doing whatever. And it's, it's, it's more work. It is an investment in money, you know, $20,000 for lighting you know, for six lights and a tablet. I'm at like almost five grand for uh steras. So, you know, I get, you know, uh, six, 20 grand, mm -hmm. 10 grand for ape lab lights. I could see that, but the look on, you can't, you can't do it with anything else. Well, the thing for me was, is full transparency. I'm not into lighting. I don't like lighting. I just want enough to you know, bring a little bit of ambiance, a little romance or intimacy during dinner, and then something to kind of highlight, hey, it's time to party. Um, totally respect people who have, you know, trusting in great light shows and DMX and, and sound switch and all that. It just, as a one woman show, I don't have the bandwidth and it just, it's not a passion of mine. Um, so Ape Labs allow me to have a, a pretty decent look without having to go crazy because their music mode is like, nobody else's so i just want to turn it on have it do some cool shit and just keep it moving and, and get to the music um but Absolutely. you know power to anyone who who has the effort and the equipment to do that are just lighting lighting is not my thing i just don't well, care about i know it. i know dj fire he does a lot with dmx and i know other guys like holly Darkstar. he does dmx there's a lot of guys out there who are dmx gurus uh dj salsas matt here he's a dj he's a dmx guru and he goes through and has everything all mapped and but does I, I all this hate crazy programming. <laughs> I love <laughs> lighting, hate, but I hate programming. You hate the programming, so but you love the outlook. You love the look of it. And that's that. Oh, that it's incredible. Is, it's incredible. Yeah. But that, I just that, don't have the time. Yeah. That's and, why I love record box lighting mode. Yeah. I really love it. And I've actually, since you made a comment, buddy, a few weeks ago that I should add more to my lighting rig, I've done so the last few weddings and really been able to delve in to all the other settings in record box lighting mode. It's insane. Like when I really sat down and set everything up in my crib one day, I'm like, okay. And the programming I'm behind it. And if you don't like the scene, you can change it just by what right clicking it and changing the scene that it gives you. It is so cool. And don't like, I, I think I'm going to, my gig log from Friday night, I did, I'm going to, when I get it up, it's all don't like got everything wi wired in correctly from my, uh, the what do you call it? My up lights to my moving heads and my power cans on the floor, and it works so much better than I originally thought it did when I had time to actually work through it. And that's one of the things that AI and you know people use this term AI. It's an algorithm. Those algorithms in Ape Lab, those algorithms in certain software, do help. So if you don't have the like I do some DMX. I'm not that great at it. I do understand the fundamentals of it. And I don't mind doing some stuff with moving heads. When we have a pack of moving heads, I have little moving heads, great little lights and doing a little bit. I have no problem with, but like, kind of like you, Rachel, I don't want to have to spend 20, 30, an hour plugging everything in, even with the doggles wireless system that you can get. Like I have Chave. I, I have that, but the Asteris I turn on, I turn on the, the transmitter. Um, the uh, their hub, I connect my tablet to it. it all the, the apps are on the tablet. I click what I want to do, or if I want to make a custom uh, custom uh, scene, I can do it fairly quickly, and it's so easy in the app versus on, on uh, like I have Chave um, for DMX, it takes uh, more steps to do. <laughs> but the nice thing is that, it, again, well, you have that part of the brand, look. you know, some DJs are known for that and like, you know, they see at a wedding and they're like, hey, I want that. Like the, my referrals and my like the the business I've built and the brand I've built, people aren't hiring me for my light show. They're hiring me for me and my mixing style and just like the overall experience, you know. So I, I'd never get my, any pushback or questions or, hey, do you offer this or cold sparks? Like they know in advance, like that's just not what I do. And it's, it's fine. That's just not my market. I'd rather refer it to someone talented, like Solstice or what, like that loves it. I just, I have no, yeah, I have no interest in it. So. We get a lot of people that like, I mean, obviously, you know, my style is a bit different. I try to bring the music festival type of feeling and vibe. And so I've been getting a lot of customers that like, they see my Instagram and they're like, Oh, we want that like awesome club style show and feel. And 
you know, booming bass and loud music and strobe lights and lasers. And I'm like, that's, that's what I do. But then again, I get some that are just, you know, kind of price shopping and we do have a pretty decent, like I include a lot of stuff that maybe other DJs don't in their pricing. And, and so I get some that just want like, you know, Oh yeah, lighting's cool. But like, you know, they don't really care. They just want some lighting that they paid for. And, and what I, what, what I call the basic vanilla white bread wedding music. And uh, I'm perfectly fine doing that, you know, and, and upping the intensity a little bit. But I prefer to like the wedding I did a couple weeks ago where it was like all EDM and trap like they met at EDC, like they, all they wanted was music festival. Like that's my those I'll take any day. Like it's just yeah. But I don't know. It's hard because there's there's so much competition here. And, and the, just no matter how cheap you think you are, and we're not. But there's a even guys that do it for 500, somebody will say, Hey, I'll do it for 400. There's, there's all these SoCal wedding groups on Facebook and, you know, brides and, and grooms that are on a budget. And I understand a budget, but like some of the guys, you know, some will be like seven hour reception, you know, we want this, this, and this, and our budget's $500 and there'll be 20 people that are like, I'll do it. I'll do it. And it's just like, it's, it doesn't it's help like around. anything. Those, those are not your customers. Those are not the customers you go, you're going after. Your customers are more sophisticated. And just like Rachel, she goes after more sophisticated customers like I do and Darren and Brentley and Mike. We go after the customers who are willing to pay what we're worth. And they know either via social media or by reviews or whatever, uh, reputation, whatever, it, that that they have – a great person that does certain things and that we fit them and they talk to us and they're like, wow, you're, you, you are an amazing DJ company. You know, if, it doesn't matter if you're one person or you have a couple of people working for you. If you can, you know, repeat that over and over again, and you have people who like what you're doing, you're going to have business. Again, you're great. Every customer, not every person is your customer. And that's the one thing I think a lot of DJs forget, you know, they don't want to bid, they want to bid on everything. And I see that in certain, you know, groups and stuff like that. Hey, I'm available. Hey, I'm available. Hey, I'm available. Uh, you know, every single thing. Hey, you know, uh, a dog is, uh, want to have a house build, uh, can, and wants to have a party for a hundred bucks. Is anyone available? And someone's, oh yeah, I'm available. I'm available. It's the same person. And to me, it's like, you're just bidding everything. Is, is there something you don't do? There's something that, you know, you have a limit. And to me, it's, 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 it's just one of the things that, again, I, I think everyone here on the show, um, we we provide a great service and we have a lot to provide and a great look and it, it's it's one of the things again are we ever every customer's cup of tea no but there's different DJs do different things and again they look for something very very basic and they want a very low price again there's plenty of DJs out there for it I don't fault them for it that's what they do hey God bless but there's also other customers out there who don't mind putting out a a dollar two more and get a better product and that's one of the things I try to do, and I know everyone here tries to do very heavily. Um, and again, when you spend money on lights, on equipment, on a booth, on whatever you're spending money on, it, it's it's one of the things you need to recoup, recoup that for your investment. But also, it gives you a certain look and a certain branding too. There's nothing like out there when you see Rachel out there with her ape, ape lights behind her and her booth out there and that look, or just like you, Matt, with the lasers above your head or Mike with his booth and the two tomes next to it, or Darren with his uh, setup and his Evolve 50s next to him, or Brentley <laughs> with his setup or my setup, it, it gives a certain look that people look at and go, I want that look. And then some people are like, no, I, I you know, I don't care. I just want I just want music. I don't care what you look like. And again, may not may, may be your customer. So it, it's a hard one to, to walk down, you know, what who's your customer. Again, you have to find out your market. So the last thing I ask everyone here, because we're going to be ending this in a second or two. Uh, and again, I want to thank uh, Rachel for coming in here tonight and Darren Lee coming in tonight onto the show. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you follow them on social media and follow their channels. They have a lot of great stuff on their social media, especially on YouTube and stuff. Uh, Rachel has like, great gig logs. Uh, I just want to say you have some fantastic gig logs and it's always fun watching you. You're always uh, just like here in the show. Always a smile, always looking forward, always a great attitude. Uh, DJ Brentley, same thing. He always has a great time. Uh, I always want to go. I, I'm like I tell I I tell Tracy all the time. Like I just want to go up to up to drive the five hours up there to Wisconsin and just hang out with him at a wedding. Just hang next to him, sit next to him. Like I'm here, and I was lucky enough to hang out with Mike for a couple hours and his son here at uh, 
uh, at uh, Moretti's uh, yesterday, and I appreciate that. And say to it, Matt, one of these days I want to go out by you uh, out in California, hang out. And uh, Rachel, you're coming here to Chicago. So again, I still got to take her some good pizza. So don't be afraid to reach out to me and ask me. I'm more than glad to, to send you some great places or take you some places, you you and your other half. Um, but before you, we go, one quick thing from you guys. If you had to uh, do it all over again, far as with your lighting, everything you have now with your lighting, uh, would you do it again? Sure. Mike, would you do your lighting again the same? Uh, parts of it. <laughs> I, I've had some mistakes, some 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 mistake purchases, but for the most part, sure. What about you? What about I you? Would, I would. If I had to like re. Okay, so I wish these these both lights, these little IR fours, were invented way back in the day when I started doing lighting because they're pretty cool and they're small and lightweight and put a decent output out. Um, because I, I always started with my, my first set of up lights were those big box lights that I still use. Um, I've gotten different versions, but um, I would have, and yeah, like that's the thing I think, you know, we all have been in the game for a while. So we have invested so much into up lighting and gear and it's like, you've got 30 up lights. You're not just all of a sudden going to switch brands and switch style of up lights. You may add some, but then the colors may not match. Everything might be off and I'm a perfectionist. So I need everything to look the same. And, uh, but I would have like, if I could change, I, I would have, I would have gone all in on like moving heads. Like, uh, but that's the thing is like, I can't use haze or fog at most of my events. So like the point, like what's the point of a moving head then? Cause it, it's just a spot on the wall at that point. Wash moving heads are cool, but why not just use regular wash lighting? I don't know. That's probably mm -hmm. my thing, but I, I, I still use like, <laughs> Every piece of light, there's nothing that I've bought lighting wise that I regret at all. Probably those tubes. I, I probably wish I would have got a stairs, but <laughs> I also couldn't justify dropping $6,000. So that's, yeah, they're not cheap. So, Rachel, what about you? Would you, uh, would you keep everything you have now or would you change something for lighting other than the sticks? Uh, I'm going to say that the, the sticks, I guess, a little buyer's remorse. Again, they're dope and there's nothing wrong with them. It just, they don't really fit in my workflow. Um, I've pretty much sold off all the, the stuff I don't use anymore. So what I have right now, I'm, I'm in, in, in love with it. Um, the other regret, um, it just slipped my brain. What was I going to say about a, a regret lighting thing that I, I had? Oh, um, I bought a easy, it's like a Chevet EVE or like an Ez. It's like, um, easy go boat. Uh, easy gobo the oh, thing was exactly. literally <laughs> it was like six hundred dollars yeah. for this thing and i bought it to do a bat signal for this person's wedding and i charged for it and it essentially like it, it paid for like the thing and i actually gave the groom um the the metal disc gobo the batman is like a, a wedding gift and whatever and it, it was dope that damn thing has been sitting in my freaking garage ever since then. And I don't want to get involved in gobos. I don't give two craps. Like I'm, I'm over, I should just sell that thing, but I, I haven't. So that's another buyer's remorse. That thing was expensive and I've used it one time. Projectors so, in the future. Uh, Facebook marketplace is going to have a gobo yeah. projector on there soon in the Connecticut <laughs> area. So if you're a DJ in the Connecticut the area, you may want to reach out to Rachel and say, hey, I want to buy your Gobo projector. Darren, what about you? Is there your lighting system right now? Is there anything you would change out or is everything you have pretty much really great to go? I really like what I have now. Um, I don't use the moving heads anymore. Really. I mean, unless the client really wants it or dictates it. But um, the Steras, the AX1s is what we primarily use like you, buddy. Um you know, we have up to six of them we use. I love them. Got custom uh, stands for them. Um, I just think they, they cover a dance floor. They're great for photography. Um, you know, with the flicker free. And, and it's just, they're they're amazing lights. The light shows we can do with them are, are, are great. With, with actually kind of minimal input, really. You know, how easy they are to use. Um, the Ape Labs, we use those for years. Love them. Love the Maxis like Rachel. Um, you know, we run 24, I think I had 24 of them. Um, I had the cans as well. Um, and we do some, some lighting usually around our booth with that. 
And then I do have a few sticks, eight lab sticks. Um, and actually, let me know if you want pool. 12 more. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We have a garage sale, at eight, Rachel. We, we have a we're going to have an auction now soon. Now, <laughs> I'll yeah. talk to you at the marquee show. I feel like DJ, For isn't sure. that DJ, DJ Pet guy right down the street from you? Uh, Lavish Live by DJ Peck. He's in Connecticut too. He uses a ton of ape stuff. Does he? Oh. I, I mean, know. I haven't announced like I don't like I'm thinking about this, or <laughs> no one's like you know connected. But now that I think of it, people are just sitting there. They're just not a good workflow for me. I also I was gonna mention like I'll go through phases where I may not use certain lights for a while just because either they've fallen out of my like overall showpiece of like what we like for all the proms we've been proms and dances and all that other stuff. Like we've been running a similar look uh, on different levels, but. Like it's different from the look we had last year. And that's not because I have new lights. It's just, I found different ways to mount them and different fixtures to use. So instead you're of, always, yeah, you're always improving the bars for using pixel tubes instead of, um, you know, uh, what else? Instead of like fog, we're using haze instead of this, we're doing that. But it's like, I'll go through phases. We'll be like, I'll think it, I'll be in bed or in the shower and I'll be like, Hmm, this design would look cool here. Or this would be cool this way, or this would be cool this way. So I kind of like rotate it through. Um, that's why I never really, I never really get rid of stuff. I just, a buddy of mine who's in New York, I just gave him a set of lights that I haven't used for like four years. Um, but like, I just, I was holding on to them that long for no reason. Really. They work. I was just like, I'll never use these again. And they're not really worth much, but he, I saw him using a pair in his gig log and I'm like, do you want two more? Like, just pay for shipping. I'll gladly send them to you. So, so we're going to we're end up with DJ Brantley. What about you? You're lighting and now you found this extra stuff that you could do in the software that you're like, you're really pumped for. And you're like, I could do all this extra cool stuff. So uh, what about you? What about you with lighting? Regret. I wish I'd never listened to another DJ in my market when I bought four of those freaking uh, Chauvet Kintas and <laughs> four of those spider lights. Horrible. Now, six, seven years ago, yeah, every DJ and their grandmother had them, and there were dots all over everybody's dance floor. But in the last three or four years, I've completely shied away from touch. Like, they're sitting on the top shelf of my garage, each, you know, in, like, three cases that I should just part with and invest into something better. But I'm like, well, what if you actually do need that? Not that I ever – and I haven't touched the cases in at least three years. So I think that's my one regret of purchase, and – at some point, I'm just going to dump them and find something better. So we're going to have some garage sales here soon. One in Connecticut, oh, yeah. uh, probably one in California, and one up in Wisconsin with uh, some DJ gear. Just lighting, nothing really else, I don't think. that Everyone else wants to get rid of anything else there unless they find something else. I know I have a couple things uh, I want to get rid of myself and uh, not lighting. I'm on the uh, fence about dumping all my Mackies now and buying a bunch more LD speakers. I'm not a hundred percent ready to do it yet, but right. I don't know. Those two, the two twelves and two fifteens are really, really good. Like I'm <laughs> glad you upgraded to those. Cause those oh, are wow. what they are. Those, those Icoa are 15s blew my mind. And I didn't, I wasn't even pumping them yeah. and they were filling an entire room that I normally need four speakers to get a good cover up. They carry crazy. Yeah. And they're warm. They're not like the EVs that are just like, flat but this abrasive loud people have been so, sleeping on ev or people have been sleeping on ld like those icoa subs are hard to find now but I'm, back in november when i told everybody get them i'm really debating doing some clearance and buying stuff at the end of the season or sooner and that, that's the thing. You find the right tool that works for you. And again, I know a couple of people here who have the Evolve 50s and I have the RCF J8s and uh, Mike has some PVs. Uh, and you are switching over from EV over to uh, uh, LD. And I have LD. I have Maui 5s. And, I, I you know, again, I, you find stuff that works for you. That's the important stuff. And talk about working for working for you. If you have any comments, critiques, questions, criticisms, anything else, please put it down below. Uh, again, you see that we try to answer questions at every show. And I want to thank uh, both Darren Lee again and Rachel for coming in here and have, spend some time here on the DJ Roundtable. As always, you're, it's a pleasure having you guys in here. Uh, and Rachel, I know your schedule is always crazy busy. We look forward to seeing you coming here for Marquee. If you haven't done so already, you schedule your time to go to Marquee. Uh, it is coming next month uh, here in June. She will be here in Chicago doing a presentation. Uh, always great information to, uh, for her presentations. And um, it's one I'll of the things. I'll be hosting. That... No presentation. No? No presentation? I'm just hosting. 
Oh, me and me and go. my daddy just uh we're hosting mm -hmm. hanging out keeping the show flowing maybe do um some facebook live stuff for people who can't make it it's hanging out there there you go maybe uh maybe i'll come up and hang out with you for a bit <laughs> bring you some you good should. pizza though <laughs> hey rachel do you have your 90s dress ready for the party I don't. I have a couple of uh, like outfits in my cart, and I just have to hit like buy. Dude, I still have to buy my plane ticket. <laughs> like I'm not oh, ready to go. Oh, come on, you gotta buy it now. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm way behind the eight ball on this. Well, I know. Again, I know you're very busy, young lady. So it's it's always good and. Uh, we good to have you here in Chicagoland area. So again, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in tonight on the DJ Roundtable. If you're watching this on Twitch, make sure you follow it. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you follow the channel on YouTube. And we appreciate it. See you guys all the next time on the next show.